luck runs out but safety is good for life good day everyone this is my fruitful journey in basic occupational safety and health with the guidance of our instructor engineer chris polo g maranan as you can see this is the table of contents starting with the introduction of myself followed by the course introduction and the outline of the presentation from activity number one to number six and my takeaways for the latter part of my presentation Greetings everyone, I'm Stephen Menes, a fourth year BSME student. As you can see, uh, one of my hobbies are biking and nature trips. And I'm here to talk about all my learnings, expectations, and ideas with relevance to basic occupational safety and health or BOSH. So what is the true essence of BOSH? As per the course description itself from our educational platform, which is the Canvas, Bosch 101 or Basic Occupational Safety and Health, the development of Bosch safety terminology, safety programs adopted by high-risk industries, hazards and the manufacturing, gas and power industries, and other engineering sectors, and how to prevent or mitigate them. Techniques for hazards, identification and analysis in workplaces, off-the-job safety, disaster prevention and mitigation, and incident investigation are all topics covered in this course. Nothing is 100% safe under all conditions, even you. It is your responsibility to keep yourself safe. You, as an engineer, should hold paramount the health, safety, and welfare of the public in performing your professional duties. How you should do that? Join me in discovering the course Bosch 101. There are vital safety tips, policies, and principles you will learn and use in your career as an engineer. So involve yourself in the course and take each lesson very seriously. Before we familiarize familiarize ourselves with the definition of OSH. Here I'll show you first the percent distribution of cases of occupational diseases by type of disease in the Philippines in the year 2019. With the total occupation diseases, cases of 54,551, and the leading cause of such disease cases is the back pain that is under the ergonomic hazards that has a total cases of 21,264, followed by the neck and shoulder pain that has a total case of 6,621, occupational dermatitis with a 5,112 cases and below that are also relevant cases of occupational diseases in terms of its types. Moving on, this is the percent distribution of cases of occupational diseases by major industry group in the Philippines also in the year of 2019. The leading major industry that such cases occurred is the manufacturing industry with a total case of 17,372, followed by the administrative support and services activities with a total cases of 13,265. And with the least cases among all of them is the repair of computers and personal and household goods and other personal services activities that has only five cases. With such cases, aren't we bothered? A total of 54,551 cases of occupational disease is something that we should focus on. If we have enough knowledge, we can lessen the number of cases each year that is what the OSH can give us, the knowledge we need to avoid, to mitigate, and lessen these cases of occupational diseases and hazards. So what is OSH? Occupational safety and health, or OSH, is concerned with all aspects of workplace health and safety, with strong emphasis on risk prevention its goal is to keep people safe from workplace accidents and harm. Here are the set of activities that we did to be aware, gain knowledge, 
and understand that we must prioritize to have a safe workplace for everyone as an engineer. Starting with activity number one. Activity number one, we first tackle the importance of OSH. Number one, it reduced the risk or accidents or injuries by identifying and mitigating hazards. Followed by improving efficiency and productivity due to fewer employees missing work from illness or injury. Number three, improved employee relations and morale. Number four, reduced costs associated with accidents or injuries. Number five, lower insurance premiums resulting from fewer workplace incidents and workers' compensation claims. And also, here are the following types of hazards, not just in engineering, but can also experience, that can also experience everywhere. On the top of that, we have the bio biological hazards. Number two, the chemical hazards followed by the physical hazards, the safety hazards, number five, the ergonomic hazards, and the psychological hazards. Moving on, activity number two is all about the hazards that you will encounter in the field as a mechanical engineer and what you should do to avoid it. As a mechanical engineer, there are several hazards that you may encounter in the field. Some of these hazards include the physical hazards, Physical hazards includes falls, slips, strips, and other accidents that can cause injuries. It can also include exposure to radiation, extreme temp temperatures, and loud noises. Another one is, in, is the chemical hazards. This includes the exposure to hazardous chemicals such as acids, solvents, and other substances that can cause respiratory problems or skin irritation. Followed by electrical hazards. This includes exposure to live wires, electrical shocks, and other electrical hazards that can cause injury or death. And last one, the ergonomic hazards. This includes the repetitive motion, the injuries, back strain, and other injuries caused by poor posture or incorrect lifting techniques. So what are we going to do to avoid such thing to happen? First, employers require safety glasses, gloves, and hard hats. We also called it as PPE or personal protective equipment. Number two, obey company or project safety rules. Following safety procedures and guidelines that was provided or that is provided by the company or the project. Number three, check all the equipment before use. Ensuring that all equipment is properly maintained and inspected before the using or before the actual project. And number four, um, report any hazards to your supervisor. Of course, identifying and reporting any hazards or potential hazards to your supervisor. Um, number five, avoid distractions and stay concentrated, staying alert and focused on the task at hand that can avoid distractions. Number six, breaks prevent fatigue and ergonomic injuries. Of course, we must take a regular breaks to avoid such fatigue and reduce the risk of any ergonomic injuries that is related to your skeletal systems, of, especially in the back. Number seven, um, keep your workplace tidy to avoid slips, trips, and falls. Moving on to activity number three, which we answer the question of what are the unsafe acts and unsafe conditions in your workplace as a mechanical engineer and ways to promote safety consciousness. What are the unsafe acts in our field? Number one, not wearing PPE or failure to wear appropriate personal protective equipment um, such as safety glasses, hard hats, and gloves as I stated earlier. 
Number two, unlicensed machinery operations or operating machinery without proper training or authorization. Number three, ignoring safety rules. Number four, accident causing first plane or any destruction that can lead to accidents. And for our unsafe conditions, we have bad illumina illumination or poor lighting or visibility. Number two is work or walkway obstructions. Number three, poor ventilation or toxic contaminants or inadequate ventilation or exposure to hazardous materials. Number four, faulty machinery or defective machinery or equipment. To promote safety consciousness in mechanical engineering workplace, um, you can take the following steps or tips. Number one is to provide regular training and education on safety procedures and guidelines or offer ongoing safety training, such as seminars to your workers to avoid such thing to happen. Number two is to regularly inspect and fix dangerous circumstances, circumstances or conduct regular safety inspections and identify and correct unsafe conditions. Number three is openly discuss safety management or encourage the open communication between employees and the management about safety concerns. Number four, make sure everyone wears PPE. Number five, reward safety achievements. Of course, we must celebrate safety milestones and reward safe behaviors. Number six is hold unsafe employees accountable. Number seven, assess and improve safety policies or continuously evaluate and improve safety policies in and procedure rather. By taking these steps, you can create a culture of safety, consciousness in your mechanical engineering workplace and help reduce the risk of accidents and injuries. And now, Activity number four is all about the basic industrial hygiene in mechanical engineering. Industrial hygiene in mechanical engineering involves identifying, evaluating, and controlling workplace hazards to prevent work-related illness and injuries. Some basic principles of industrial hygiene in mechanical engineers are the hazard identification or job hazard studies, safety inspections, and employees' feedback can identify workplace dangers like noise, vibrations, or chemicals and dust. Number two is the exposure assessment. Monitor, sample, or model exposure to specify the danger and compare to relevant exposure limits. Number three is the risk management. Implement, implementing controls to manage and minimize workplace hazards such as engineering controls, administri administrative controls, and personal protective equipment or also known as PP. Number four, training and education. Provide training and education to employees on hazards and their control as well as safe work practices and emergency response. Um, recording, record keeping rather, and reporting. It maintains accurate records of exposure, monitoring, control measures, and medical surveillances, and report any work related illness or injuries as required by law. Number six is number six is the program evaluation, assess the industrial hygiene program and make improvements. In mechanical engineering, some specific areas concerned for industrial hygiene may include noise exposure from machinery, vibration exposure from handheld tools, and exposure to hazardous chemicals, and exposure to dust and other airborne particulates. By implementing basic industrial hygiene principles, mechanical engineers can help ensure 
ensure a safe and healthy work environment for themselves and their co-workers. Moving on to activity number five, which we include the basic industrial hygiene in mechanical engineering. Industrial hygiene is a broad topic that covers a range of subtopics related to identifying, evaluating, and controlling workplace hazards to protect worker health safety. Some rele relevant topics related to industrial hygiene includes the chemical exposure. This topic covers the evaluation and control of exposure to hazardous chemicals in the workplace including toxic gases, vapors, and liquids. Number two is the noise and vibration. This topic covers the evaluation and control of exposure to noise and vibration in the workplace, which can lead to hearing loss, musculoskeletal disorder, and other health effects. Followed by indoor air quality, this topic covers the evaluation and control of indoor air quality, including exposure to mold, dust, and other airborne contaminants. Number four is the respiratory protection. This topic also covers the use of the personal protective equipment or the PPE, such as respirators, to protect workers from, be from breathing in hazardous substances. Followed by ergonomics, this topic covers the evaluation and control of ergonomic hazards in the workplace, including poor workstation design, repetitive motion injuries, and musculoskeletal disorder. Number six is the hazard communication. This topic covers the communication of hazard information to workers. Um, it includes the safety data sheets, um, the labels, and trainings. And lastly, the medical surveillances. Uh, this topic covers the monitoring of work, workers' health, including pre-placement and periodic medical exams, and the monitoring of exposure to hazardous substances. Um, these topics are all relevant to industry, industrial hygiene and are essential for protecting workers and their health and safety in a variety of workplaces, including manufacturing, construction, healthcare, and others. For the last activity, the, la the activity number six, we did which is concerned about the corresponding benefits with, with relevance to Occupational Safety and Health Program or OSH program. What are these benefits? There are many benefits associated with the effective occupational safety and health program. Some of the corresponding benefits include the improved employee, employee health, improvement of employees' health. An effective OSH program can improve the health of employees by identifying and controlling workplace hazards, promoting healthy work practices and providing appropriate training and equipment. Number two, reduced workplace injuries and illness. Implementing an OSH program can lead to a reduction in the workplace injuries and illness, which can help to reduce lost workdays, workers' compensation costs, and employees' turnover. Number three is the increased productivity. By promoting a safe and healthy work environment, an OSH program can help to increase productivity by, reduce, by reducing absenteeism, um, improving employee morale, and creating a culture of safety. Number four is the compliance with regulations. An effective OSH program can help organization comply with occupational safety and health regulations, which can reduce the risk of fines and penalties. Number five, the improved reputation. An OSH program that demonstrates a commitment to employee health 
employees' health and the safety can help to improve an organization's reputation, which can lead to increased business opportunities and employee recruitment, followed by the reduced costs. By reducing workplace injuries and illness, an OSH program can help to reduce workers' compensation costs, medical expenses, and other related costs. Improved business continuity. An OSH program can help to improve business continuity by identifying and managing risk to the organization and its employees followed by improved employee management. An OSH program that actively involves um, employees in the identification and control of workplace hazards can improve employee engagement and job satisfaction. Number nine is the improved risk management. By identifying and managing workplace, hazards and OSH program can help to reduce the overall risk to the organization and its employees. And for the last benefit with relevance to OSH is the enhanced organizational culture. An OSH program that promotes the culture of safety can help to enhance the overall organizational culture by demonstrating a commitment to employee well-being, well-being and continuous improvement and for the last part of my presentation which i include my takeaways on bosch first is the occupational safety and health refers to the practices of ensuring the safety and well-being of workers in the workplace the basic osh principles includes identifying workplace hazards assessing risks, and implementing control measures, providing appropriate training and personal protective equipment, and monitoring and evaluating the effectiveness of OSH programs. Followed by that the OSH laws and regulations vary, vary by country and region, and organization must comply with the applicable standards and regulation. The benefits of an effective OSH program include improved employee health, reduced workplace injuries and illness, increased productivity, compliance with the regulations, improved reputation, reduced cost, improved business continuity, improved employee engagement, improved risk management, and enhanced organizational culture, as I've said earlier. And the OSH requires a collaborative effort between employees, employers, and other stakeholders to ensure a safe and healthy work environment for all. Then again, I'm Stephen Menes, and always remember saying that luck runs out, but safety is good for life. Thank you for listening and have a great day.